Hello everyone, this is Zook, and today I'm bringing you a drawing of one of my favorite comic book characters of all time, namely Carnage. Better said, one of my favorite comic book villains, actually, because he's a bad guy. And for that reason, he was classified in 2009 as 90th, the 90th greatest comic book villain of all time by IGN, which I personally think is an unfair classification, because... If we're to take into account his mentality, his abilities, and the damage he's caused, then he's a pretty badass. I mean, the guy's a psycho killer, right? He kills for no reason. He has no pattern. He just kills, just because it's fun for him. He has this awesome set of abilities, his pure evil. So I don't get why he's 90th. For those of you that are wondering, the first is Magneto, which... <laughs> I find Magneto pretty boring. I mean, he's just an old fart who can bend metal. Sure, he has. Uh, he's also evil and has this plan, blah, blah, blah. But come on. His abilities don't even compare to Carnage's in terms of coolness and to many other uh, mutants and villains in the comic book universe. But anyway, that's just my opinion. I think 90th for Carnage is not, not the, the most fair place. But uh, oh well. Anyway, a little bit of information about who the character is and when he first came out. Carnage was created by Mark Bagley and David Micheline in uh, 1991. His real name is Cletus Cassidy, even though there have been other people that have benefited from being infected by the symbiote which created Carnage. There has been a version of Spider-Man Carnage at some point. Also... Uh, there was another guy, I think, that was the third edition of Carnage, but I can't remember his name. Ben Riley, I think he was. In any case, Cletus Cassidy, he, uh, his biography goes like this. He was one of those people that was born a killer. If you've ever seen a documentary about it, like I'm talking about in real life, there are actually studies that are trying to prove that people are born killers that some people are born killers, that there's actually a killer gene in our body that makes us, not us, but people in general, do evil things. Well, taking all the evidence into account, I do believe uh, Cletus Cassidy can be classified as one of those people. He killed his grandmother when he was a child. He tortured his mother's dog. And at some point, after his mother tried to kill him, his own mother... His father beat her to almost to death, and then he was incarcerated. So his family was pretty messed up overall. And he was sent to an orphanage, of course, where he killed the administrator, he killed a girl that didn't want to date him, and to finish everything off, burned the whole place down, just like that. So the guy, for all intents and purposes, was a pretty mean bastard. He grew up and... Uh, became an, a serial killer, obviously, the only vocation that he could have, uh, have had, considering his childhood. He was eventually apprehended and incarcerated in um, Rikers Island Prison, I think it was the name, where he shared a cell with Eddie Brock, who you probably know as Venom. He had already been uh, infected with a symbiote by that point, and he had lost it, but eventually the symbiote returned to Eddie Brock and left behind an offspring, because apparently symbiotes can have kids. So the offspring infected um, Cletus, it went into his bloodstream, and formed Carnage. He broke out of there, he killed everyone, started killing over all over the place, and then of course Spider-Man had to go after him. And because Carnage was so super strong, according to uh, his biography, he had better abilities and he was stronger than both Spider-Man and Venom combined. And his powers were amplified by his, his own mentality. Cletus was the kind of guy that considered the feelings of love and friendship are absolutely useless and futile. And the only true freedom which one can achieve is by mindlessly killing everything in sight. So he just killed because he liked to kill. And those are the most dangerous kinds of people. So he was captured and locked up and he escaped and he was captured and he escaped. So 
there was a whole lot of back and forth between Spider-Man and uh, and Carnage throughout the comic book series, mainly because Carnage was so strong and he always managed to find allies. Uh, every time he escaped, he found like a bunch of other uh, mutants or whatever you want to call them that would uh, would aid his cause. So Spider-Man was kind of alone. At some point, he had to form a partnership with Venom just to be able to to capture Carnage. Now, his set of abilities, Carnage's that is, included, of course, superhuman strength, which everyone has in comic books, um, the ability to morph his his um, members into weapons. By members, I mean hands and feet. The ability to launch projectiles at enemies from his uh, symbiote flesh, so to say, which would harden and then evaporate after a few seconds so they couldn't be used against him or anything. Uh, he also had the ability to see from every part of his body, not just his eyes. So he could see everything and anything that was coming towards him. He was immune to um, diseases. He also had a very high resistance to um, to sonic waves, which was Venom's worst enemy, but not Carnage's. Carnage's like The thing that defeated Carnage was actually heat. And the thing that defeated Venom, or the symbiote, was uh, sonic waves or sound. So Carnage was, you know, he had a pretty badass set of skills. And um, I'm not sure how it all ended, but uh, I'm, I think Cletus died at some point or something. Another thing that I found uh, sort of amusing was, w while he was incarcerated, a doctor wanted to take blood from him, and he, you know released venom and not venom but carnage because it was bound to his bloodstream so whenever he bled he would turn into carnage so he killed everyone there and just escaped that was a bad call on the docs part i have to say now i just guess i should probably talk about the drawing a bit i chose this pose because i didn't know how high i would go with the tendrils and everything and it turned out that i would have some space left but i didn't really use any reference for this uh it came down to improvisation more than anything else because the internet is just full with images of Carnage, and they're all different. Like, I couldn't find two images that were similar or alike in any way. Every artist that has made a drawing of Carnage has their own interpretation, and I'm pretty sure along the years, um, the comic books have had different versions of Carnage as well. So there's no fixed pattern. I know people like to whine about that, that something doesn't look like what they think it looks like, but really, there's there's no rule when it comes to these characters. Every guy that draws them has their own interpretation. They're still called that way because they present most of the characters, characteristics. In any case, I hope you enjoyed the video, and there weren't many technical things I could talk about. It's basically a muscular figure with a lot of icky stuff coming off him and from him, so it's, it's nothing out of the ordinary except the coolness factor of the character itself. But uh, I still hope you enjoyed it. Thank you for watching, and be sure to visit my channel and subscribe. There are plenty of other, other videos there that will not be posted on Total Halibut's channel, if that's where you're watching this. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.